welcome to another video and welcome to the first video in the new house the first proper video there's been a few vlogs today i thought i would do a vogue and mccall's pattern haul for you guys now as you guys know i have some amazing peeps out there who are happy to go to joanne's for me when they have the sales on and shop to my heart's content which is absolutely amazing and i haven't ordered anything from the something delightful the Vogue McCall's Butterick official site for ages. When I do, it was usually to have it sent to someone like Erica so that she could smuggle it over for me when she came to visit. However, I went on the website the other day uh, because they had a sale and I thought, you know what, I'll just, I, I've had a lot of free time. I'll just have a quick scan through and see and add them all to my basket and see how much the postage would be because the last person that sent me patterns was a very lovely D and it was around about $80 in postage which was totally fine that's what it cost not a problem at all still usually cheaper than the uh, something delightful site I thought so I was wandering my way through added all the Vogue patterns to my basket went to check out added in my address for a postage quote and it came up free and I don't know if this is a permanent thing, but if you spend over $70 on the site, you get free postage. I was just like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. So I clicked buy and then I thought, hang on a minute, it's not only Vogue that's on sale, it's McCall's as well. So, and they've just released the new McCall's summer line or spring line. I'm going to go have a look at that. The uh, the lighting in this is natural lighting, so it's going to, it's going to fluctuate throughout. I'd already placed my Vogue order. I had the fear that I'd done it wrong and placed an order for PDF patterns, but the PDF patterns weren't on sale, so it was like, no, and I checked, and yeah, if you spend over $70, then free shipping worldwide. Awesome. The McCall's were on sale as well, so I went back in and I ordered a whole bunch of McCall's patterns. I had to add a few kind of older ones to get it over to the $70 mark because the McCall's ones were on sale for $4 or uh, 3 dollars but still I managed it so I placed a second order. It took quite a while to arrive, it took about two weeks to arrive but I didn't end up with any customs fees or import fees or anything on it. The patterns worked out around about £4 each if I split the cost over the two boxes and that's way cheaper than you can get them in the UK. Yes you have to spend $70 which is around £52 to £55 depending on the exchange rate but that's still way cheaper than you still get more patterns for that amount of money than if you were buying them in the UK. Awesome news! Shall be doing this way more often. Yes, the McCall's patterns are twice the price if you buy them in Joanne's, but as I say, free shipping, which obviously saved would have saved me $80 from the last time that I had patterns sent to me, so, you know, it, it works out. That's a lot of waffle. I have patterns to show you. Uh, let's jump into it. The first one is Vogue 9288. This is a cape pattern. It came out a couple of seasons ago, I believe, and I liked it, but I wasn't like overly infused by the line art. And I have seen a couple of people make this up in real life, and I absolutely love it. And I think I've told you guys before, but I have a lot of elbow length gloves in my collection that I just don't wear because they are easy to put on and then put your coat over it but if you have fitted sleeves on your coat and you take your gloves off you then end up with gloves bunched around your wrist or you have to take your tie coat off to put your gloves back on which is just not convenient so i thought something like this would be awesome for wearing with elbow length gloves and also it would look really awesome as a cape you know not just for elbow length love wearing purposes but i really like this pattern and i'm really glad that i've got it and i can see myself making it this coming autumn because it will be one of those ones that's not going to be the like the warmest coat you've ever worn but it will be a great cover up so looking forward to making that one then we've got the vogue 8888 which is a very old pattern i thought i had this one in my stash but i don't i have the other lingerie pattern that vogue do i can't remember what the number of that one is off the top of my head i haven't made any of the pieces from it but i really liked all the different pieces in this one especially the slips i wear slips quite a lot and i thought it would be a great idea to add this to my collection that's the neighbor schnauzer <laughs> Okay, so next up we've got this Vogue 1704, which is the Rachel Comey shirt and trouser set. I this is really unusual for me. I love these trouser this trouser shape. I just don't know if it will work for me and if I can get it to fit. But I really liked the shirt. Statement sleeves are a big thing and have been for a couple of seasons now. So I thought it could be quite a fun one to try. And I actually really like how the big sort of sleeves and shoulders balance out my hips. 
and definitely made me look hourglass so I thought that would be a good one to have a go at. Next we've got Vogue 1702 which is a Claire Schaefer custom couture collection. I have read all the instructions for these actually multiple times because these are the only patterns I have access to at the moment. We've had a lot of free time in the evenings. I really like the instructions for this. It is very couture it is an advanced pattern there's lots of couture techniques in there i really liked the shape of the trousers by themselves and the overlay of the top is really pretty i do really like the overlay i will definitely make this as is once but i do like the trouser pattern as well underneath so if i can get that to fit me then uh, that could become a staple in my wardrobe because as you guys know i very much like wide leg trousers although I am trying to branch out as you saw with the previous pattern. Next we've got Vogue 1643. I featured this in one of my Get the Look for, for Less videos. It's definitely a take on Gucci. I really really like the pleated skirt and I like the kind of longer line jacket as well. I would like to give this a go. I think it could be quite interesting. I'm not sure how I'd wear it but I fancy giving this a try. I think it could be quite a fun make and it will be interesting to see if it then becomes something that I wear regularly because it is a very different style for me as you know most of the tops and jackets that I have are either cropped or full skirted so it will be interesting to give this one a go. More trousers next we have Vogue 1772 these are gorgeous pleated at the front you can either do them with a fly front a hidden fly front or a zip at the back I'm not sure which one I would prefer to be honest I kind of think I'd prefer the zip at the back just because it looks a little bit sleeker and these are very wide leg trousers I like the culotte length of them as well and I like how they've styled them with the boots and the green culottes and the kind of roll neck I think that's nice I really like this pattern and again wide leg trousers hopefully I won't have too many issues fitting these over my hips then we've got Vogue 1752 I have coat addiction issues I have quite a lot of coats already as mum pointed out when we were unpacking them. I have patterns for more coats and I have bought yet another pattern. I really liked the asymmetric front of this which again is very unlike me. I usually prefer symmetry in my clothes but I really liked the the slightly off-center buttons that are going down at a diagonal and the front slit. I thought it was a really interesting pattern. I love the back of this. I love the cuffs. I'm going to put up the line drawings on this because you can see better on the line drawings than you can on the front of the envelope. Some of the details are going on in there I think it's a gorgeous coat definitely want to make this next we have Vogue 1726 which is pretty much a copy of an Isabel Morant shirt that's come out recently again this is not usual my usual kind of thing that I would gravitate towards I tend to prefer fitted tops but I have been kind of enjoying how bigger sleeves and things look on me and as I say it gives me a more hourglass figure sorry about the light again I'm interested in trying this one out it's either going to be an amazing success or it's going to look hideous on me but I, I do think it would be quite fun to have a go at this one it's got like the cowl neckline it's got the big sleeves I like the the kind of wing detail on the stripy one I just I think it's going to be quite fun to make and it could be quite interesting to see how this would then pair with other things in my wardrobe. More trousers, 1729. These are again Rachel Comey. These I love. I love the detail around the ankle where they have been kind of pleated and tucked in and sewn down. I don't know if this shape will suit me. I have bought the smaller size range. If it had been these were six six dollars if it had been a little bit cheaper i might have bought both size ranges possibly will still go back when i do my next something delightful order because there will be more orders in my future now that there's free shipping yeah i really like the look of these again i have no idea if they'll suit me or not but i really want to give those a try next we have a guy laroche and it's 1721 this is for knit fabrics which i hadn't realized when i bought it it's a really pretty dress very much up my alley kind of big sleeves fitted top gathered skirt i think it's gorgeous it's going to it's it's very much like a woven pattern that i have and rachel made recently recently from vogue and i think it's going to be quite an interesting one to see if i prefer a knit or a woven version of this dress because I, I do have plans to make the woven one as well and finally so many of you guys messaged me about this one it's vogue 1714 it's the leather or faux leather jacket or close fitted lined peplum jacket with asymmetric zipper closure extended shoulders shoulder pads and length variations i really like this i probably would make view b which is the one with the longer peplum at the back just a preference of mine again this is asymmetric but i 
I kind of think you can get away with it with these kind of jackets. Not that it, there's anything wrong with asymmetric, it's just not my preference. So many of you guys messaged me about this pattern when, when the Vogue released their, this is their, from their winter one. When they released this, loads of you were like, oh, this is so you, you should get this. And uh, now I have. This might get made sooner rather than later, although I still have my Ziggy jacket to make. Ziggy jacket first, maybe, and then this one afterwards. Again, how many moto jackets does one person need? Can make them in different colours, so all of them. And I have space in my wardrobe. If you've watched the latest vlog, you know I have hanging space in my wardrobe for cropped jackets or shorter jackets. So uh, yeah, that many. I need all of the moto jackets, clearly. <laughs> so that was my vocal. As I say, they were six dollars each. It came to around about seventy-two dollars in total, which was around fifty-two to fifty-five pounds, and no postage, no customs fees. Absolute bargain, if you ask me. So I've got eleven patterns. That's five pounds a pattern. That is cheaper than I can find them in the UK for sure. And these, by the way, were my reward for not biting the dentist when I had three wisdom teeth removed. Usually I would get fabric, but there wasn't anything that I was desperate for. And that was another reason I was trawling for something delightful site. This is my well done for not biting the dentist reward. <laughs> Those were the Vogue patterns. I shall now show you the McCall's patterns. So I have 15 McCall's patterns, which works out at about £3.60 a pattern. And again, because there was no postage costs, no, no um, import fees, which was awesome. There's no way to guarantee that you won't get import fees on a parcel and I, I mean, I was glad that I ordered them in two separate orders because I, that kept the price down so that might have helped with the not getting any import fees, but it was just, I think, luck of the draw. So th I'm not saying that you're never going to get import fees if you if you go through this method, but I was lucky and I didn't. So yeah, £3.60 for a McCall's pattern. Again, way cheaper than I can find them in the UK. So the first one is McCall's 7973. I think this is one of those dresses that I kind of had discounted beforehand because I had to get the order over $70. It was one of those ones that I was looking through and I kind of like added it to the basket. And now that I've got it, I think it's actually a really, really lovely pattern. I really like version D, which is the little green one up down the bottom there. I like the sleeves from View B as well. I like the neck detailing from view B and view C so there's lots of really interesting details on this one and I think it could be a really versatile pattern so I'm excited to have that in my stash. Then I went for the McCall's 6819 which is a costume pattern. I've got the other version of this. This is a kind of nod to Once Upon a Time so I have the Wicked Queen Regina Mills version of this pattern and this is the Snow White pattern. I really really like this, it's got a really cool shirt in it which has got kind of like gathers around the neckline and bishopy sleeves which I very much enjoy and view A which is sleeveless but with little sleeve caps. If I made that shorter that could be a really cool like I really like the long one and if I ever decide to do a once upon a time cosplay this would be a great starting point but I do really like it and if I made it slightly shorter and even maybe high low hem it would be actually something that becomes slightly more wearable day to day slightly <laughs> but I, I like that and I'm glad that I've now got this in my stash because it's been on so many wish lists for quite a long, long time this has this has been out for a while next we've got McCall's 8154 which is Bowery they're, they're, they're naming their patterns now. Initially I had discounted this one because View B was I think the main image on the website as well and it wasn't really something that jumped out at me. I love View A but I don't particularly like my legs so I wouldn't wear shorts but View C when it was belted with the drawstring details at the top and clot length I thought that was really really cool so I can see myself making that out of some lightweight cotton lawn or viscose for the summer and wearing that in the warmer months. I thought it was really really interesting so I'm glad that I picked this one up. Again the uh, cover art not doing it for me but if you have a look at the line drawings this bit, that's when they become a lot more interesting. Next we've got McCall's 7868. This is an older pattern. I had seen somebody else make something from this pattern on Instagram and I had taken a screenshot of it because I really 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 liked how the end product looked. It's got big sleeves, it's got different neck details, I like the cinching at the waist with the elastic which would probably be what I would do for every single version just because I think I would find that easier to corral and wear under things like trousers and skirts but yeah I really like this and I thought it was something that would work well in my wardrobe and be quite easy to fit as well hopefully. So 
like that a lot. Next up is McCall's 8045. Now I already have this pattern but I have it in the smaller size bundle. I love these jeans. I'm not sure that they will suit me but I want to give them a try. As you guys know don't particularly like myself in skinny jeans at the moment and I, that's just a personal preference. I prefer wider leg trousers. I think it helps balance out my figure a bit better but I really like the details on this one when it came out so I wanted to have the pattern. There is absolutely zero chance of the smaller size bundle fitting my hips so I was having to buy patterns to get over the $70 mark which is where the costume pattern came from and then also the larger size bundle that I got of this pattern. At some point I will give this a try. Next we have McCall's 8141 which is Asta. I absolutely adore this. I wouldn't make it in satin like they have on the envelope but view B is my favourite with the longer sleeves. I like A with the little tie. I'm not sure about the shorter sleeves. I think I probably want them to either be flutter sleeves, not gathered in like they are, or longer. View C is gorgeous, but it would be really difficult to wear a bra with View C. If you see, so it probably won't be something that I will make. The back of this, the zip only goes up to the uh, top of the midriff panel. So I'm gonna alter that so that the zip goes up a little bit further so it actually covers my bra so that I can wear a bra with this dress because if I can't then I won't wear the dress. That is going to be really easy to, to do, having read the instructions, totally can get that, can do that, that's not going to be a difficult modification to make. I think this is gorgeous and it's definitely high up on my list of things I want to make when I get back into the sewing room. Soon, very soon. Next up is McCall's 8078. Again this is one that I already have but I have it in the larger size bundle, so I have bought it in the smaller size bundle, it's an Angela Clayton, I think these are Edwardian style blouses. Please collect, correct me if I am wrong, if I've got the era wrong. I really like these. I would wear these day to day, totally. And I bought McCall's 8071, which is the skirts that go with them. And again, I really like these. And I think these together, you could make them look very history bounding. You could make them look very modern depending on how you styled them and what you made them from. So I'm very pleased that I have those. I love Angela Clayton's patterns. I think I have every single one now. Oh, I don't have the hat pattern. Maybe next time. I really like these and I'm very glad that I have them in my collection. This is definitely a collection by the way. This is not a realistic, I'm going to make all of these patterns this year. I have hundreds. It's a collection. I like it. I, it uh, I've said this before, buying fabric, collecting patterns and sewing are all completely different hobbies. All of them bring me great joy, as you can tell. So next up is another one that I added because I needed to get over the $70 mark and it is 8102 Loretta. This would not be something that I would initially, it wasn't in my immediate, yes I must have that one. I really like the shirt. I want to try and work out a way that the shirt is kind of fitted at the waist probably with a drawstring and a bow at the front but I, I really like all the pin tucks and ruffles on the shirt I'm not a fan of the skirt I probably won't make the skirt but I do very much like the shirt so I'm glad I have this one it will be fun to play around with next up is McCall's 8146 which is Myrtle it is a wrap top with epic sleeves absolutely epic sleeves there is a Laura Ashley pattern, I think it's Laura Ashley, hopefully I will have the number picture up here for you, of a wrap dress that I fully intend to make. Having read a few reviews on it, somebody suggested using the sleeves from this because they were more statement than the sleeves from the original pattern. Not made either, so I have no idea how accurate that is or if the original sleeves on the original dress are going to work for me, but I like this in and of itself as a, sh as a, sh a wrap shirt. I think it's really, really pretty. And I like that there are three different sleeve options, the short sleeve, the ruched at the wrist, and then the slim at the wrist. So I, I'm glad that I have this one and I can definitely see myself making this sooner rather than later. I have another shirt pattern. It is, well, this one's actually a button up. That one was a wrap top, but okay, I have another top pattern. This is McCall's 8181 Jennifer. It is gorgeous. So it has a sweetheart neckline, big sleeves with many options on them. You can either make it sleek all the way down or you can crop it or you can have a peplum on it. I probably wouldn't put the peplum on it. I don't know. I'd want to wear it tucked in. I want to play around with all the versions of this but I do really like the overall look of it. I think this might be one of my favourites if not my favourite from the new release from McCall's. It's 8177 Ashley. I love this. I don't 
particularly love the one that they've made up for the cover envelope with the short sleeves. I like the strappy version or the longer sleeve version. I think the shorter sleeves I just the, the puffy like that are just not very me I would probably make those flutter sleeves so not put the elastic in at the bottom and see how that looked but I love the longer ones the longer sleeve option <laughs> in case you hadn't guessed I like that kind of look and I love the strappy version of this I have a very much older McCall's pattern that is similar to this that I have been wanting to make up for a very long time never have gotten around to that one this that one has cup details on it and I believe just princess seams but this one does have some different to it and uh, I'd like to give this one a go as well I think it's absolutely gorgeous more statement sleeves with 8176 which is Jessica I think view C is my favorite and again that's because it has the fuller skirt and the longer sleeves the, the sleeves on view B again because they're kind of a puffy above the elbow I'm not sure that I'm gonna like those but I really like the ruching detail and the gathered skirt on this I think it's really really pretty and I'm looking forward to giving that a try then we have McCall's 8175 Vanessa this is similar to one that I've done a sew along for I can't remember the number of it but I will put a picture up on screen so with the previous dress the cutout was at the back the, this one the cutouts go all the way around to the front I really really like how this looks with my previous one i just i did it as they said and put hooks and eyes on the top part to keep it closed they don't keep it closed because they're not under tension and they come undone i'm going to take that apart i had thought i was going to turn it into a skirt but i have decided that i want to make some rouleau loops and make it a full button down on the back and so i just need to take it apart put the rouleau loops in and sew on the buttons and i'm going to do the same with this one when i come around to make it i'm going to put buttons all the way down the back of the top part of this dress just so that I can keep it closed it won't kind of pop open because I think yep two hooks and eyes no doesn't work not for me anyway I will definitely it will definitely hide my bra that way as well because with the when it was open with just the two hooks and eyes at the top and the bottom you got a flash of my bra which I have to wear a bra I feel more comfortable with a bra I think rouleau loops and buttons up and down this are going to be the way forward Hi Chi. And then finally, this is another older McCall's pattern, 8167, but they have rebranded it and they've called it the Martina dress. This has been around for a while. I featured this in a Get the Look for Less video. I can't remember the name of the designer that I was kind of like using uh, using as the inspiration for this as the dupe but I couldn't get this one out of my mind I really like that designer dress now this one is very unlike me it has no shaping at the waist but the designer dress had drawstrings at the waist and a ruffle around the hem so I would like to give that a go I want to put my time and money where my mouth is and and, and have a go at making some of the dupes that I have come up with, which is why I added this one to the pile. And that is number 15, the last McCall's pattern that I got this round. Giant pattern haul, which was your favorite? What would you like to see me make first? Let me know in the comments down below. I think it's probably gonna be, I think it's probably gonna be the Ashley dress the 8177 McCall's pattern. I think this is probably gonna be the first one that I go for, just cause I love it so much and I think it's so, so pretty. So yeah, that's that's my favorite. Let me know in the comments down below which was yours. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.